When watching historical World War movies, we often encounter scenes where soldiers face their fate as bombers fly overhead, dropping their deadly payload. These scenes evoke a sense of dread as we imagine the destruction that a military aircraft can bring. Surprisingly, the title of the fastest bomber ever does not belong to a contemporary aircraft, but rather to one from the Cold War era, the North American XB-70 Valkyrie. During its heyday, this plane seemed like it had sprung from the pages of a sci-fi comic, with its remarkable speed only adding to its almost legendary reputation. Sporting a sleek, angular design, six powerful afterburning engines and state-of-the-art targeting, navigation and electronic warfare systems, the XB-70 was on track to claim the title of the world's fastest, largest and highest flying bomber in history, until it wasn't. The XB-70 Valkyrie was developed in the late 1950s to meet the United States Air Force's need for advanced strategic bombers, aiming to replace the B-52 Stratofortress, which was deemed vulnerable to Soviet interceptors. Capable of reaching speeds of Mach 3 and cruising at an altitude of 72,000 feet, the aircraft was intended to be nearly impervious to enemy interceptors. Soviet planes of that era would have stood no chance of catching up to the XB-70, flying as it was at three times the speed of sound. Moreover, detecting and following the XB-70 would have posed a significant challenge. Its high velocity would have made it tricky for enemy radar operators to track, and even if they were able to do so, interceptors would have struggled to intercept it in time. Despite its evident benefits and the apparent need for supersonic capabilities in modern warfare, the XB-70 Valkyrie had a relatively brief operational lifespan. It made its maiden flight in 1965 and completed its final flight in 1969. So why was its time in service so short-lived? The development of the XB-70 despite its remarkable design and capabilities, encountered major obstacles. In the late 1960s, Soviet surface-to-air missiles proved to be a formidable threat to bombers, including the lightning-fast XB-70 Valkyrie. These missiles were capable of targeting the Valkyrie even when it soared at supersonic speeds. To avoid these missiles, the Valkyrie initially flew at low altitudes. However, this strategy was unsuccessful as it made the aircraft easily detectable by radar and susceptible to enemy fighters. As a result, the Air Force determined that the XB-70 did not offer any significant advantages over the B-52 Stratofortress in this new environment. Moreover, due to the high costs and operational expenses of the program, the Air Force decided to cancel the XB-70 program in 1969, with only two aircraft being produced. The retirement of the aircraft was also prompted by a tragic mid-air collision with a NASA F-104N chase plane, resulting in the deaths of the F-104N pilot Joe Walker and the co-pilot of the XB-70, Major Carl Cross. Even though the XB-70 program was cancelled, it still had a big impact on the development of future aircraft. It set the stage for supersonic aircraft programs and offered important lessons in aircraft design. The XB-70 is now showcased at the Air Force Museum, where it can still be seen today. Given its remarkable speed and high-altitude capabilities, do you think it's a waste to have such an advanced bomber sitting in a museum? That's all for today. Thank you for watching.